Hello, dear viewer. Hello, dear viewer. This is Lorenzo, and you're watching KSP to Mars. Today, with episode 11 already, and we are today attempting a mission suggested to me by one of my subscribers, Nathan. Thank you, Nathan. We are launching Fredbury Kerman in a polar orbit so that he can do a lot of EVA reports and beam the science results back to Kerbin. We're doing this in a polar orbit to maximize the amount of biomes he will fly over. Now this doesn't sound too spectacular, although if you've watched the previous episode you have seen many a spaceship burn up on re-entry and to fix that problem the mission parameters don't include a re-entry. Fredbury will stay in orbit indefinitely. Not the nicest thing to do to a brave astronaut but then again he is maximum he has maximum courage and maximum stupidity so I can get away with it and he will advance the frontiers of our knowledge forward. Here we go launching the rocket. It will take quite a while to get into orbit as you are well familiar with. The science I'm hoping to gather today uh, will go towards purchasing advanced rocketry that will consolidate all these fuel tanks into half as much, half as much fuel tanks again because they unlock the large fuel tank. The tiers after that have things like solar panels, uh, wings, larger rockets hopefully, um, well, I mean, we are falling over now, that's not, that's not what we're planning, I don't know why we're falling over, I don't want to fall over, Fredbury doesn't want to fall over, because he was never intended to come back home, his capsule does not in fact have a parachute, so if things go wrong here, which, they, which it appears they are, uh, he is not going to be able to land safely, which is of course a problem, although he does have a rocket engine. We are of course going to try and land him safely. This is more important than ever because in the persistent.sfs file I have disabled the respawning of crew members. So if Fredbury dies, he is gone forever and we will have to recruit new Kerbals. I don't know why this is happening, but for the next launch I'm going to add winglets to the SRBs and throttle them down even further so they burn up in tandem with the liquid fuel engines. For now I am cutting all liquid fuel engines and hoping that this rocket will burn out so that I can separate everything. Uh, separate, separate, separate and that this bit will manage to, to land to save Fredbury. We don't have a parachute as I said but we have an engine and we might be able to land on that. So, and it does have a trust to weight ratio of over one. So I think that this rocket should be able to to save Fredbury. And even though he is a stupid, stupid astronaut, he does of course deserve saving. He volunteered for this no return mission. And don't leave no Kerbals behind. Actually I'm going to retract that statement. It is quite likely we'll be leaving many many Kerbals behind in the process of this program. So let us see how we can... Ooh. Are we coming in too fast? No. Fredbury is a champion at using his orbiter as a lander, as it appears. So. Here we are, safely landed, so we can go ahead and recover that vessel. Might even net us some science. Recovery of a vessel from a crashed ship. Well, zero science points, so none of that, none of that. The thing is I need more control authority on that first stage, and it doesn't really have any. Because these boosters are, of course, they don't have any control and the rockets are the non-gimbaled variety. And I'm going to throttle back the boosters to 65, 64.5, why not? Maybe that's the problem, this one is at 64 and this one is at 64.5, that's a slight imbalance. I don't know, I can't seem to change that, so I'm going to go ahead and launch like this. Oh, I hit exit there. What I'm trying to do by throttling back the boosters is to make them burn a similar amount as the liquid stack so that, uh, so that they burn out together and I can just drop the rocket 
drop the first stage when it's done. So in you go again, Fredbury. You did very well this time and launch that. So maybe I should impart a little bit of rotation to the rocket so that the imbalanced SRBs are spreading out their their wobble over the whole stack. But then again, if I use if I want to have a constant rotation, I can't really have SAS because that will cancel the rotation. Let's just try this again. Here we go. Enable SAS and manually rotate. Now that's not something that works. But so far so good. We are going straight up. So far. Let's see about keeping the nose dead center. Pointing straight up. There is some drift again, but so far I can compensate with these aerodynamic control surfaces. I hope. Maybe I should swap out these engines for the gimbling variety. Anyway, I'm just going to keep on going, keep on trying to get the rocket on course. The solids and the liquids are burning quite evenly. But I might have to ditch the stage prematurely if we're going to fall over again. That will not do. And I might need to add a reaction wheel to the top of the spacecraft. I think that's probably the best thing to do. To add a reaction wheel to that spacecraft. Because this isn't, this isn't working. I'm going to try and keep the... Oh, I, can't, I can't really disengage this stage, of course, because then the solid boosters will smash into me. I'm going to try and maintain at least a horizontal heading until these solid boosters run out and then I'm going to try and gun it for... Is there a biome that I can get science data from? I don't think so. Oh shit. Yeah, I think I need the reaction wheel. If I have the reaction wheel, I can probably keep things pointing up. So. These winglets don't appear to really be doing anything, even though they sh these should be the controllable winglets. We now have a gimbal engine in the center, but we are heading straight down. Right. Well, let me try again to save Fredbury. Uh oh. I left that rocket on, which is never a good idea. Right, saving Fredbury, this will work. I'm going to cut the video here and then put the reaction wheel on the spacecraft so that we may control it. Or then again, no, no need to cut the video because this won't take long. I wonder if I'm coming in too fast now for Fredbury to survive. I sure hope not. Hey, he made it. His engine did explode this time, but he did make it. So, going to recover the vessel. And back to the VAB we go. I thought it would be a simple matter of swapping out the satellite, the Sputnik thing, with a capsule, but apparently not. And the rocket is misbehaving because of that. Let's have a look at this R8 winglet. Active control. It doesn't seem to be active controlling when... when I try and steer it and stuff. Anyway, that must just be me. I'm sure it is actually actively controlling. Right, up to the rocket and adding a reaction wheel. That should help things. It will of course also make the rocket more massive again, which never is a good thing in these big solar system things. Let's see the staging. Did that get messed up? I hope not. And we still have 11.5 kilometers per second, which should, if I recall correctly, suffice. So not Jebediah. This mission is still Fredbury's and as they say, let the third time be the charm. I hope so at any rate. So, stability on, throttle up, and launching. Let's see, 
so far we are again going straight up this one this happened before as well so let's see if this reaction wheel has in fact got the bunch to do it we can see our old rocket debris over there 10 kilometers distant so we did at least get somewhere if that's something to be proud of or not so I'm not so sure about that but the nose is at least pointing up still we are drifting a bit but hopefully by utilizing all the control authority we have we can prevent falling over because falling over is something no one wants if this doesn't work I'm going to switch out the engines for gimbling engines on the bottom or at least the center one or I'm just going to bang my head against the wall until it's bloody because this rocket worked before it should work again it has the controlling winglets it's going straight I don't know why this is why this is veering over maybe it is the, the, the thrust imbalance but then again this is balanced around the rocket as well I don't see why that should part of difference. Anyway, the stage has almost burnt out. We we are still pitching over more than I want to, but it's so far not catastrophic. And we do need to pitch over to get into orbit, so so far so good. I'm not however going to ride out the rest of this first stage. As soon as the boosters cut out, which is now, I'm going to drop it and move on with this stage, which I think is a fair bit more controllable the gods of rocketry have decided we will be heading for a suddenly oriented polar orbit which is fine by me let's see if we can keep it here the rocket and we might still make orbit we have of course thrown away a bit of delta v in those not quite empty fuel tanks it's not a huge amount because if you recall from previous missions that uh, the, the remainder of that first stage basically doesn't have enough thrust to weight ratio to, to, to accelerate the rocket in any meaningful amount and this stage does. A bit of a weird trajectory but we are now pointing up and whether we are going to make it or not is now anyone's guess. I will fast forward the rest of the flight because it will take several minutes again. I'm not going to jump cut to it because it's not certain where we will end up so enjoy some music and fast forwarded ascent video. The rocket has burned out, and as is typical for this space program by now, we are not quite in orbit. Almost, we need about a kilometer per second of delta V more, or, ev or even less, but so far we don't have that. So let's have a look if we can get any science from Fredbury's impending death, because let's face it, he's not going to survive this. And there's no crew report that will make us happy. Is there, in fact, an EVA report that might make us happy? There is no interesting EVA stuff to be gleaned from Kerbin's water. So, and before we are going to crash, we will get nowhere else but in the water. So, I'm sorry to say, but no progress has been made so far. That is annoying, that is annoying, that is annoying. Let's fast forward and see, at least be there when Fredbury dies. We can, I suppose we can try and, oh, 
right, at five frames per second. We can try and see if the capsule's heat shield will stand up to the atmospheric onslaught because we will be entering at six and a half kilometers per second. We have in fact already re-entered and that is not going to make Fredbury a happy man. I can predict that. We do have a reaction wheel to keep us precisely oriented, but this engine here is rapidly heating up and will soon incinerate it. So, bye bye Fredbury. Let's see how things. Ooh, things, things don't look very much better from here. Let's see, 1200 degrees. Uh, not not happy at all. 1500. That's about to explode. That's the engine. Now comes the fuel tank. I think that was the fuel tank. Now we have the reaction wheel that's heating up. Something else exploded. The batteries are maybe going. And now we have the exposed heat shield on the bottom here. Hey, that's actually going going great. The shield is ablating only slowly. Look at that, maybe a capsule just can survive this. Reaching G limit. Oh no. We are slowing down at 15 Gs. Fred Burry Kerman died of G-force damage. Oh dear. So, that is a surprise. The heat shield is easily capable of withstanding this uh, this amount of heating which is something I hadn't expected at all but Fredbury isn't he got crushed so I think we don't have any control now in this pod this does change everything that means we can in fact bring him back if only our booster rocket well we can't can't bring Fredbury back I'm going to make a rocket that will do this that will put a man into orbit and waft him down to su down to the surface safely. I'm going to do this. Well, this will just crash. There is no excitement more. Fredbury got crushed to a pulp inside of this. Sorry, Fredbury. Uh, sorry I didn't get you any exciting science, but we did discover something, that this heat shield is in fact enough to re-enter. At least I'm going to assume it will. It stood up to a 7 km per second re-entry. It should probably do a 9 km per second one if it's a bit shallower. It has to be shallower because otherwise the G-loading is too extreme. Right. Thanks for watching. I'm Lorenzo. I'm going to design a rocket that can do this and I will be back to you with that rocket for the next episode so hopefully then we'll be able to get science to get more rockets to get more science to get more rockets to get more science to get to mars that's the point anyway so see you later